Welcome to the show for baseball fans by baseball fans. Dingerbats.com presents Full Count, the podcast. Now here are your hosts, Keith Gibson and Dingerbats owner, Kyle Drone. Hello, everybody. Keith Gibson here on Clubhouse Lounge Radio. A special day today as we're going to talk a little baseball here on our Dinger Bats Full Count sessions. And we've got uh, my usual co-host on Full Count, Kyle Drone, Dinger Bats owner with us. And our special guest today, Texas Rangers reliever, Spencer Patton, Central Illinois native. Spencer, thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hey, we're going to talk. Uh, last week, we put up on, on the page and on Facebook about fan attendance. And I uh, wanted to get, you know, you, you mentioned that, hey, let's discuss this. So what are you seeing as far as attendance goes from a player's perspective? You know, I'm seeing a lot of empty seats on, on TV on highlights and things. Are you seeing that too? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, – I've noticed it not just at our ballpark, but at, uh, you know, some of the other ones we've been to are already. Uh, yeah, it does seem that attendance is down. Um, I think there's a number of reasons as to – possibly why that could be you know uh stemming from the lockout you know i think that upset a lot of fans um you know especially the diehard fans you know the ones that were ready for baseball uh ready to get outside ready to get back to the stadiums you know because not every stadium was at full capacity last year yet um and now that um they are you know there's a lot of people eager to get back to the stadiums um but i think to me, just in kind of step with the lockout is just the, I just think MLB doesn't do a very good job of uh, marketing the game, you know, yeah. from the game, getting, trying to reach out to the next generation of kids to get to the, you know, to get to the games and, and stuff like that. You know, it just seems like they kind of just promote maybe five guys, you know, and that's it. <laughs> I don't – you don't have a billboard anywhere, do you? No, I don't. No. Uh, you should. You should have a billboard somewhere. No, but uh, ticket prices, that's one thing that comes to mind. I keep looking, you know, and I look – you know, I've got a family of four now. Um, you know, i got the two little ones. And you look and it costs, you know, an arm and a leg, literally, to take a family of four to a ball game. And, you know, back in the day, it didn't – wasn't that much. You go to the yeah. secondary market and the prices are even higher. So, to me, that's one thing that's kind of keeping fans out, too, is, is those ticket prices. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, I think there's still ballparks out there. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it's not across the board, but, you know, like the Wrigley's, the uh, Fenway's, you know, I think those are always going to be the cheaper ballparks to go to just because they traditionally have been, you know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the more teams buy and build these big multi-billion dollar stadiums, you know, they're going to – tickets are, are continually going to go up. Uh, I think it's a bad time right now to go – with tickets high, you know, with obviously with the economy, gas prices and all that stuff going up, everything's going up. If you want people to come to the games, then, you know, the ticket prices should be lower. You know, I think, I think they make just as much money inside when people are inside the ballpark as they do actually getting them there. Yeah. $14 beers aren't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you think it, it kind of is a direct effect to like a mid-market team such as the Rangers goes out, builds a new stadium, spent a lot of money on bringing on some star power this year. And now they feel like they've got to get that investment back immediately instead of letting it take its course. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the, you know, business strategy is on that, but, you know, I'd imagine they're going to try to get that money back at some point. So, you know, whether it's ticket prices or, um, you know, the, just the money that these players are going to bring in for as far as, you know, Jersey sales and, and marketing uh, opportunities and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what their price, their price points are based off of, but it does seem like it is a little high. I know that uh, some places for opening day up in the nosebleeds were like 90 bucks a ticket. You know, that's, that's insane. I mean, who would want to spend 90 bucks to go sit, way at the top of a stadium, you know, in the freezing cold. Do you think that's had an effect too, Spencer, a little bit? I know Wrigley is, is a place I, you know, I love Wrigley. I'm a big Cub fan. Mm -hmm. um, 
but April is not a time where I want to go to Wrigley because of the weather. Yeah. You know, down there in Texas, it's a little warmer. Um, but you know, Wrigley and these, these upper Midwest and, and, uh, East coast, it's still a little cold there. That's going to affect it a little bit too. Don't you think? Yeah. But I mean, it's cold every year at the same time. It's just attendance this year is down from previous years. So, um, I just think it, you know, the lockout didn't help whatsoever. Um, and then just I, just the marketing standpoint of MLB, how they're promoting the game. And um, I just – I think there's – I think baseball in itself is a lot different than other sports where the traditional, you know, sense of the game is what draws people to the game. And then, you know, every year it's like we have to deal with cheating scandal. Uh, we have to deal with uh, MLB making all kinds of crazy rules, you know, and – just all this stuff that keeps getting dumped into the game. I think it's kind of starting to turn people off. I mean, it's not been know. a, right. I, I agree with you, Spencer. It's not been a, a good look for baseball the last few years. No. Uh, and so uh, I don't, I don't know. What, what do you think would you draw? You know, Cause I want my son to play baseball. I do. I mean, we're diehard baseball fans. That's why we were sitting here talking, but uh, uh, what can draw that in? What do you think has to happen to, to draw these fans back in? You know, I just – we got to get to a place, you know, where we, we're not having these discussions on how we can fix the game of a, for cheating, you know, or for, um, you know, sign stealing or whatever it is. You know, not, you just got the Yankees letter that just came out, you know, and then it seems like we're not that far away from when the Astros did their thing. You know, it's just like when do, we need to get this to a point to where all that is no longer a conversation. The game's – moving along steadily without any issues um you know and we need to stop making all kinds of rule changes to the game you know it's like they're like oh we want to try this oh that didn't work let's try a different rule and i kind of hate the whole argument of let's speed the game up you know and you know uh time frame or whatever the pace of play you know i i hear that argument all the time if you the pace of play is what keeping people from baseball. Well, I don't. I disagree. I think it's just keeping people who don't really like baseball from coming to the to the games, right? Like you know, they just want to go drink beer and not be there all day. But the true <laughs> fans that love baseball will go to a game, right? Like, oh yeah, you know. So I think, but I think what's turning those true fans off is all these crazy rule changes and the way that MLB is marketing the game. As I go to watch the idiosyncrasies, I know it's a big word. I usually don't use big words like that, but the little things that, that like you, a, a pitcher, what are you doing stepping off the mound? What are you, you know, it's those little things that I enjoy going to ball game with. Um, my question though is, is if it's not tickets, it's not that, is it, could it be that the, maybe making it more a little fan friendly? I mean, the, the players have a little bit more, I don't know how I want to say this, a little bit more interaction with the fans because you know you go to a ball game you're kind of kept away from everybody yeah. um you know and i love the fact that a lot of players will <laughs> sign autographs and stuff for the kids because you do have a lot of older people who just want the autographs to sell and make money off oh. of which i hate but um it, could could you see a little bit more interaction and think you draw that back in that younger fan base yeah i think so um you know i think you know, the pandemic really hurt with that because they stopped doing like on-field BP passes and opening the ballparks early for uh, fans to get in to watch guys take batting practice. So I think once we get past this whole pandemic thing, if we ever do, um, then uh, they start op- – I mean, we've already started opening our stadium up for BP passes so people are <clears throat> on the field watching BP – um, you know, once, and then, you know, once they start letting fans in early again to watch batting practice and they can get down to the field level and, and, you know, uh, see their favorite players and, and ask for autographs. I think, I think that'll start to pick back up. Um, yeah, I mean, that could have, you know, that could be an issue with it. just the past couple of years, there hasn't been much fan interaction, but like I said earlier, I think the, the people who are really excited for baseball to come back this year in full swing, uh, we're kind of, you know, kicked in the head a little bit with the lockout and, you know, kind of, I think that may have uh, something to do with what's going on with the attendance. Yeah, I, I agree completely. I mean, the lockouts uh, followed following the pandemic, I think was a double whammy right there. And I think 
speaking back to, you know, the friend uh, or the fan friendliness of it, I've said for years, just, you know, I own a bad company. I'm at spring training every year. Um, and it's the players have been distancing themselves from the fans and it's not the kid's fault. It's, and it's not necessarily the player's fault. It's the autograph seeker trying to monetize that. Yeah. And I've said for years, if they could block off a section, it wouldn't take that much an hour before each game down each baseline for just the kids, you know, 12 and under, let yeah. them go down there. And if I knew my kid was going to get a chance to, you know, see these players possibly get an autograph, you know, I'm going anyway, but, you know, I think it would bring in some new, you know, new fans that don't yeah. get that opportunity, you know, and I, I just think that's something that goes back to what you said about marketing the game. Mm -hmm. Your players are your biggest market of the game. And if they don't get to see a superstar or a chance to even be close to one, then, you know, there's not a lot of reason to pay that $90. Yeah, no, I I hundred percent agree with you, and you know there's still there's still our players that take time to do those you know autographs during batting practice and stuff like that. Just the other day, oh, absolutely, we, yeah, they do. Just in the other day out in Oakland, they had like a youth youth league night, and the, all the local youth league teams were there. And, um, I stayed out a little bit and signed a bunch of autographs before the game. Uh, and uh, then I got a, I got a tweet the other day, it just uh, uh, the next day after that from uh, the dad of one of the kids there, just, you know, thanking me and asked, like telling me how much his son really appreciate, you know, his love for baseball grew after that, you know, and uh, here this kid from Oakland, California is like, I'm his new favorite player just because, you know, you signed the autograph, you know, and so I think that does need to come back, you know, because that is, you know, when I think back on when I was a kid, what drove me to want to go to the baseball games? Well, it was a chance because my dad always took me to batting practice. Mm -hmm. And it was like getting to batting practice, watching guys hit home runs, being able to get down as close as you can to the field and ask for autographs. And, you know, I think that's, you know, my favorite player when I was a kid was Fernando Vina, you know, like not a guy <laughs> that's like a all, Hall of Fame superstar. Right. You know, but it was because I got to go down – on field level and he signed an autograph for me, you know, when I was a kid. So it's like, that's what kept me coming back to the ballpark. And I'm sure it's the same for a lot of other kids. And I think that, well, I think once we get past these protocols and COVID is kind of in, in our rear view, then um, hopefully that'll pick that back up. Now we haven't got to talk to you for a while. You were over in Japan for a while. We talked when you were over there uh, last time we got to connect. Yeah. Have you seen some big differences between coming since you came back over to stateside and, and, uh, you know, signed with the Rangers and, and done anything as you've seen any differences in the, in the game? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's way more analytical than when I left. I mean, <laughs> I knew like I followed baseball a little bit, uh, while I was over there and just kind of, you know, kept tabs on things, but, man, when I came back last year and we we're getting all these like scouting reports and analytics sheets on, on my pitching numbers. I mean, it looked like the matrix to me, <laughs> <laughs> you know, numbers all over a page. I had no idea what any of it meant, meant. And, uh, it took me a while to, you know, really kind of, you know, get a grasp for what all, all that stuff means and how it's, uh, you know, applicable to my game. And it, I'm still not 100% wrapped around it yet, but, you know, it, it, that's what I noticed the big difference was, holy cow, this went a complete different direction than what it, what it was, you know, because when I was with the Cubs last, the track man and, and that stuff was just now starting to kind of come into the game uh, full time. And um, it, I didn't really mess with it a whole lot then. I didn't have – you know, any crash course on it. And then I went to Japan and came back and everybody's using it. And now there's like a hundred different softwares and mm -hmm. reports that you got to get after you throw. So mm -hmm. it was, it was, it was kind of a, you know, test by fire for sure. When I came back. Now, does it, does it affect you or did it affect you early on on the mound as you're getting all this data to where like, if you get this player, Oh, two, you've got to throw this pitch. And if you don't throw that pitch and don't have success or does it take you away from your game any or like your feel? Because, you know, you know how you feel on the mound. Some days you got it. Some days you don't. Yeah. You know, does that affect that much? Um, you know, I think 
I think it all depends on your perspective of how you use the information. Um, there's definitely, it definitely was uh, a, a learning uh, point for me when I came back, like I go, we're getting these reports and I'm, you know, looking at everybody else and they're talking about their spin rates. And I'm like, I don't really know. I don't really care, but I guess I need to get my spin rate up. And so then I started like trying to spin the ball instead of just pitching, you know? So I think, but it's also a good uh, resource to have when you are approaching hitters, right. Or when you're mm -hmm. uh, mapping out how you attack people, you know, it is a good uh, resource to have when you, when you are looking at it through the lens of like how, how your stuff plays, you know, and how it tunnels and how the hitter sees it and, you know, which pitches play off each other better. Um, and, you know, how to attack certain hitters weaknesses with your stuff. You know, that's, a, that's what all that stuff to me, I think is, is best for is how to, mm -hmm how to set up a game plan, a pitch plan for your, for when you go out there and, and, and have to compete. But when you start using it to try to, you know, compare your numbers, your spin rates and your, all these things, your launch angles and all this stuff to other people. And you're like constantly trying to improve the, those aspects of the game. Like, you're like how, how can I get more spin? You know, well, when you're on between the chalk lines, that's not the time to be thinking about how to get more spin. You know, you gotta right. get the guy out that's 60 feet away. So I think it just depends on how you use it and when you use it and, you know, just the lens in which you're looking, looking at it through. Sitting here with Texas Rangers reliever, Spencer Patton, Spencer, we uh, don't want to take up much more of your time. We know you got to walk. One quick question for you. You played in Oakland recently. Hmm. Uh, they've had some of the lowest attendance and that we've, that's what we brought you on for. Was it weird playing without – I mean, has it been weird playing without the fans, a full-packed stadium? Um, yeah, I mean, typically Oakland's not packed anyway. Right. Um, <laughs> maybe that'll change when they get their new stadium, uh, if they get their new stadium. But, um, yeah, it is kind of weird, you know. Um, I've been fortunate enough to play in some really uh, cool places that have, you know, typically high – fan attendance you know Wrigley's always packed um Yokohama when I was in Japan all those games are usually near sold out so it you know but you know I think the pandemic kind of prepared all of us for empty seats right <laughs> like you know any fan any fan base now is great you know but last year you know I, Texas especially in Texas you know was kind of the first year back from the pandemic that we allowed fans in the stay stand. So um, it is, it is kind of disappointing, I guess, to see the, the attendance right now. And, you know, like we discussed earlier, there's a number of reasons, but I, I don't know. I just, I saw some of the comments on your Facebook page and I, I just, I kind of disagree with some of the reasonings on some of those things, you know, like. It's all right. I think we're here one, for. one of the comments was, you know, the, the quality of play isn't there anymore. And I'm like, well, that to me just blows my mind. <laughs> you right. look at the guys on the field right now with like Otani, Trout, you know, um, Wander Franco, Tatis Jr., Vlad Guerrero. I mean, these guys are doing some outstanding things on the baseball field right now. So uh, that whole quality of play, I, I just – that blows my mind. You, you're not you're not watching the game if you think the quality of play is not there right now. Agreed. Agreed. You know? So, um, and you know some of the other things like unwritten rules. People not un, not liking the unwritten rules. I don't even know what that means. Like what <laughs> what unwritten rules are there? I mean, I think I think what makes baseball great is some of the unwritten rules that we have. You know, like that other sports don't have. You know, Agreed. a lot of sports are very you know predictable and methodical whereas baseball is like there's these unwritten rules that you know if you do this this the other team's going to retaliate in certain ways or whatever you know and so that's to me is what makes the great the game great well you're on the il right now that uh they I called an oblique strain and you said it's in the rib but uh how, how close are we to getting back and get you on the mound uh, i'm hoping close um you know had a chiropractor look at me yesterday try to line me back out uh I feel pretty good today so we'll just we'll see how it goes uh they they want to make sure that my symptoms and my pain level is is 
has dissipated before I start throwing again. Um, so hopefully sooner rather than later. I'm, I'm looking forward. To, I, I've never been on the IL. I mean, I've had a knock on wood. I've had such a, a blessed career up to this point where I've been able to stay off the IL. Um, and I already hate it. I'm three days. <laughs> I, I hate it so much. I, I, I like I'm out on the field for batting practice, and all I want to do is throw a baseball, and I can't. So it's 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 frustrating. But well, let's get it. let's get you healthy, and get you back on the mound, and hopefully the rest of the way you have a great season. Uh, just keep yeah. it up. We look forward to uh, maybe taking a trip up to Chicago and seeing you in Chicago sometime when you're up there at uh, uh, what is it guaranteed right now? I don't know. They change names every two weeks, so. Uh, <laughs> that stadium, I know it, it could have a new name right now, and I would not know. Um, yeah, we're, I mean, we're, I think we come up to Chicago in June or July. Yeah, we have up in the middle of June, I think. So we'll yeah. try to get up there and see you. But uh, all right, Spence, thanks for joining us. Appreciate this on the on the uh, session, the full count. And uh, we'll, we'll follow you along. And anytime you want to jump on, just give me a holler. Yeah, sounds great. Anytime you want to have me back, I'll, I'll be glad. I love sitting here chatting baseball. So, I appreciate you guys having me on this morning. No problem. Hey, Spencer Patton, Texas Rangers reliever, joining us here on Dingerbats Full Count here on Clubhouse Lounge Radio.